it's burning, it's burning for you. Lance Bush is burning, it's burning for you. Welcome to another edition of Lens Burning Bush. I am Len Harvey. Before I bring on my guest for the week, I want to talk about what's really burning my bush. So leave it to social media to cause what's burning my bush, as it usually is up there with many reasons as why my bush continues to be burning. So last year, June 12th, with Bernie Vider, I did an episode called Stop the Cartoon Challenge, where we had to see everyone as a cartoon. Now, that was nice for the first hundred or so times we saw it, and you need to go back and listen to that episode, but that was season two. Well, now, of course, we have a new thing to go viral because we can't do anything in moderation anymore, right? It's got to be all in, right? So the new thing is called New Profile Pic App, right? Officially named New Profile Pic Picture Editor in the Apple Store and New Profile Pic Profile Picture in Google Play Store. And this, of course, shot up the charts on the mobile charts. I feel like Casey Kasem counting up the top 100 of the mobile scene with hundreds of thousands of downloads for this, as many as are listening to Lens Burning Bush. Uh, as people posted photos from the new app, a piece of mobile software that uses artificial intelligence to create profile pics that look as if it had been painted. Imagine this. This is, of course, exactly what we wanted to see, right? Exactly, right? A regular picture of the person taking a selfie is not annoying enough. We actually have to see a painting version of of these people instead. Now, some people actually do look better, I, I must say. But why? Why? Why do people feel the need to download these silly apps on social media? Isn't the real thing enough You can't just complain you're sick anymore or show your food like normal people. No, you have to go above and beyond and get everybody annoyed. With this application, of course, there were messages circulating. I don't know if you saw it, claiming that this app was some sort of Russian malware scam. Users claim the app was stealing data in a criminal way. Wow, we're getting criminal now. Others claimed it was based in Russia and connected to the Kremlin. Other rumor accused the app of being malware and taking money out of people's accounts. So far, people have looked into these claims and found that they were largely without merit or unsubstantiated, right? Now, while this app does collect some user data, its privacy policy isn't out of the ordinary. Let me give you some advice. But why do you need to share any of this information anyway? Let's not. Because here's the deal. On your phone right now, you have facial recognition that you open your phone with. So you're going to give away your face now? I mean, we're giving away our face to this third-party app. I mean, while you may think it's cute to see yourself as a painting, it just think of it this way. It may be cute for you, but leave the rest of us out of it. No one is going to really tell you that you don't look good, so it's just a love fest that we could really do without. Jeez. I sound like Clint Eastwood. Get off my lawn. With that being said, it's time to bring on my guest for the week. She's already laughing in the background. She's a veteran radio anchor. She's done just about everything in the radio business. Music, news, traffic, you name it. She's done it. She's in the lovely city of Orlando, Florida. My longtime friend, please welcome Jackie O'Brien to Lens Burning Bush. I'm going to put you on the big big screen. And Jackie, hold on for a little. We got to get the applause there. Uh, you know, you're getting your applause because you know that's that's it. That's that's all good. But um, nice. I, I figured. So here's the deal. There's always something that everybody's got to get invested in these apps. And again, the first couple of times you see it, it's oh, it's cute. But then everybody's doing it, and I'm just like, enough, stop it now, please, no more. The kids they want to be action heroes. They want to be cartoon characters. It's the it's the younger generation, you know, the anime and the um, graphic novels. I think that's where the attraction is. I don't care. I don't want to see it. I, I you know, you can do it I, again. You be you, but just leave me out of it. And I know I could hide them. I don't have to look at it. But it's just every other picture that you see. You're trying to scroll through your feed, and and you see in the new. Oh, they look terrific as as a painting, right? 
Well, yeah, well, it's, you uh, have the Rembrandt. Very good point, though, because someone is taking an image of your face. Yes. As we're using now facial recognition in things. Bingo. That's dangerous. It is very dangerous, so. and I think we we give away too much information as it is. It's like if you every application you download, it says, you know, do you want to be tracked? Like Apple will say, you know. Do you want this application to track you? And you say no, but you know that that's mm-hmm. not the case. That it, it, everybody, because you start looking for things online, and right away it's on your phone. It's like, or if you, you know, you say or something talk now, about yeah, it. yeah, <clears throat> that that happens. You say something, and the next thing you know, you're uh, you're getting ads on uh, on Facebook. So uh, yeah. it is it is crazy. Uh, I just think that you know I, I get it. They see a new thing, hey, a new profile pic. I'm gonna, I'm gonna download it and I'm gonna look good and uh, whatever. But let's be honest, it's like that fake dating app picture. We really know what you look like. Oh yeah, and and this this is not you, right? That <laughs> Jackie, and come on, hiding behind the image. I mean, just just be yourself, right? You know? Exactly. I'm not saying I'm, I'm you know, any, uh, you know, I, I'm getting up there in age. You know, we all look, uh, we're, look, you know, looking a little bit. I'm looking a little haggard these days, but yeah. I just don't need to see. So, you know, I didn't need to see the cartoon challenge, the hashtag cartoon challenge. I didn't like that. I don't like any of this stuff. Uh, I really, I think because it gets overblown and, and it was like the Bernie. I had Tim Tyrell on, another good friend of yours, um, mm-hmm. had him on and we did the Bernie meme. And it was like enough of the Bernie <laughs> meme already. I mean, remember when that Bernie meme was a big mm-hmm. thing? Again, the first few times it was funny. But after it you was s- funny for a while, yeah. but it's like a pet rock. It goes yeah, away. It goes away, and I don't want to be involved in that. And please get off my feed. I want to, you know, we want to leave it to, you know, so we could see who died and, you know, whatever. That's pretty much Facebook has become the new <laughs> obituary column for us older people. That's all we do. We look in Facebook, yeah. and if we're still, it's like the old joke in the newspaper, right? If you don't see your name, then you can move on with the rest of your day, right? You can. At our age, Facebook is all uh, dead pets and dead people, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, it, it's just awful. And, <laughs> and yeah, it, uh, I, I'm with you. I, I think yeah, it's, it's it's just part of the part of the time. You and I aren't doing like you know selfies of ourselves every five minutes like the younger people. No, but I got to be honest. Or maybe you are. No, God, no. I don't like to take pictures. My wife does that. She'll take a picture. I was like, I want to take a selfie, and and the, and friends do that, and they always want to tag you, and they do whatever. Mm-hmm. And it's like I don't want to be. I don't want to be tagged. Okay, I like to keep my. I like to keep it away. You know, nobody needs to see me on a regular basis. It's bad enough that I'm doing this video now on YouTube and yeah. Twitter and Facebook Live, and I can and people can see me. I like the ability for people just to hear. I, I'm a radio guy at heart. That's I like why that. we work in radio. We I don't know. want to be in television. We have a, I have a yeah. face for radio. That's what I like to say. So it's me just uh, – so we talk about getting older, and unfortunately mm-hmm. this is the case. But you want to really feel old? I want to make you feel really old. A couple, oh, a couple of things, because I just saw that we have some stars that either are turning 60 or already 60, okay? Let, oh, let, let, let's let's go through this a little bit. So we have a new we have a new movie coming out, Top Gun movie coming out Memorial Day weekend, right? Tom Cruise uh-huh. is going to be on the third of July. Will be sixty years old. Wow. Demi Moore in November will be sixty years old, and uh, Emilio Estevez he's already sixty. He turned sixty on May the twelfth. And we've got Bon Jovi, who just turned 60 in March. So it's it keeps going. Steve Carell's turning 60. And it well, just makes... Bon Jovi yeah. still has his hair. Yes, Bon Jovi in looks fact, great. Uh, you know, yeah. Emilio Estevez might have his hair because his dad has his hair. Right. Yes. Martin Sheen. Yes. Ex- so there, there, there's a good thing there that helps, yeah. you know, with the age thing. But... You know, um, I see we, you're not as lucky. No, <laughs> and I've got COVID hair. No, I've, so. my hair's all right. I'm just I got to I got to cut short. I got to cut short. I'm okay. I'm, I'm not bad. I mean, it looks all right, but it's just amazing that all these got you know our people that we're growing up with mm-hmm. are are getting older. Um, and you know people are talking like the <clears throat> Brat Pack, right? Yeah, you know the '80s Brat Pack. That's They're right. all uh, almost mm-hmm. old enough for. And you know what's funny? Security. The one that doesn't that still looks exactly the same. Rob Lowe, he looks oh, yeah. exactly the same. There is just, it's amazing. Yeah, he's like the good. new Dick Clark. May he rest in peace, Dick Clark, right? Rob yeah. Lowe has not aged a bit. He's 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 got to be getting close to 60, right? I think he might have been younger, now. but I don't know. 
<clears throat> now he 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 looks twenty years younger than he is. So yeah, kudos to Rob. And yeah, Demi Moore is six, going to be sixty, but you know, again, that she, woman is amazing. She just she has. has looked great her whole life, yeah. and uh, uh, plus we she has a trainer, I'm sure, and a nutritionist, and well, yeah, you know, I mean, let's let's be honest, they, they got other stuff. So. As we get older, what happens? We got to retire, right? And you got to figure out a way to retire. Mm. Well, a couple in Seattle has done it a different way. I don't know if you saw this, but a Seattle couple has lived aboard cruise ships for the past year after determining Uh. it is cheaper than a mortgage. And they have no plans of returning to uh, land. Angeline and Richard Burke, both in their 50s, okay, so there's hope for us. Mm. They have always dreamed of retiring to a life of travel. According to um, News 7, this is in Australia. But the couple had been going on a cruise around the world at least once, sometimes twice a year. But it was in early 2021 that Angeline, an accountant, crunched the numbers and found something unexpected that the pair could retire now and live aboard a cruise ship for as little as $43 a day. So about $1,200 a month, right? That's my math, basic math, right? Um, yeah. So it's cheaper than their Putting current... meals and everything. Well, yeah. I was looking even like to rent an apartment these days is, you know, even in, in, in our area, it's cheaper. It's like thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars $1,400, and that's cheap. Yeah. And then, of course, in other places, it's $2,000 a month. So living on a cruise ship, I got to be honest, those buffets aren't bad. I just wouldn't want to be confined to mm-hmm. a boat. But they get off the boat. Yeah, and you got to have a balcony. I'd have to have a balcony. <clears throat> yeah. Well, a, a little outdoor space, you know, so I can escape people. So but if, I, yeah, doable. Yeah. So they used their savings and the anticipated sale of the Seattle home. Uh, they found their way to make life possible by hopping from cruise ship to cruise ship. And they take full advantage of the loyalty points and sales to make their dream of retirement on the seas a reality. So that is uh, kudos to them hmm. for figuring out How a way. How many years could you do that though? I don't know. I think I'd be tired after two. I think I'd yeah. have to. I I'm not a see. That's one thing I like. You know, I like to be on the ground. I like. I was. You know, I I don't. I've been on a cruise ship and I, and I had a good time. But by the time I'm off the cruise ship, I'm ready to be off the cruise ship. Yeah, yeah. Me I like too. the casino. And I, I like them. Yeah, but I like to go home. Yeah, Back no, to it, land. It, exactly. So I don't know, but but they're having a good time. I, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to say anything if that's what they want to do. But uh, yeah, it sounds like a great idea, but I think I'd probably get tired of it. I think that would be the yeah. the case. So did you happen to watch uh, over the uh, last week uh, the Kentucky Derby? You saw the 80 to 1 long shot? I saw the end of it. And I mean, the um, the jockey knows yeah. his horse. Oh, yeah. And that jockey just said, you know, I knew he had it in him. And uh, and that was amazing. And I wish I had 20 bucks on that. Oh, I know, because it would have been nice, nice winner. Would have yeah. been uh, 80 to one. A lot one. of money. Yeah. That would have <laughs> yeah. been $1,600. You would've... know someone out there bet on oh, that horse. Oh, well, you know, it's funny. Money. There was uh, there was a I saw a couple. Uh, there was a couple of kids or something like that, and they won twenty five thousand dollars. It was a family wow. uh, that won twenty five thousand dollars on on, uh, it, it, which is fantastic. I mean, the bit the thing right now is that uh, Rich Strike is not going to race in the Preakness, though. So you will not see. Mm-hmm. They decided that uh, you know they're not going to you know because here is the deal. They always you know you pursue glory, career ending injuries, and even fatal accidents to raise yeah. questions whether they're horse racing. You know, so they. They're not, uh, they decided to skip the Preakness, uh, you know, and some Derby winners don't always, I mean, you, you know, here's the deal. Sometimes you just got to, you know, like the uh, Seinfeld episode and you hit the high note and you just leave the room. Yeah. I, I think it's time for, <laughs> yeah, because I don't think you can get better than what happened at the Derby, right? Well, and, and if you care for the horse, you don't want to push the horse Maybe, you know, it was a surprise. They didn't get the training. I don't know. I I support that. Yeah. I mean, let him live out his life in a nice farm with that title and, you know. And and that. the stud fees have got to be pretty good, I would imagine. Yeah. Have you ever gone to one of those races? Uh, the, you? The, no, I, I've never gone. Um, I have. I live in Kentucky now and I don't go. Uh, it's in it's in Louisville. <laughs> it's in Churchill Downs, which is about 90. Yeah. 
miles or so. But I and never, I lived across from Belmont, and yeah. I never went. <laughs> no, I, I yeah, I just I, I've been to the Meadowlands racetracks, and I've been to uh, been to Turfway Park here. Uh, they're opening up a new one soon. Uh, but I've been to Churchill Downs, but I've never been at the Derby Day. So hmm. it's you know um, what's kind of interesting though is that Lexington is where all the horses' stables are, but yet hmm. they have the race in Louisville, and I'm you know in Churchill Downs. It's like you would think they would have put it in Lexington, but again, it's been over 180 years. I think they they know what they're yeah. doing. I guess that you is. can't change that. No, you can't no. change that. So <laughs> you and I haven't spoken in a little bit, which I'm sorry. And and That's and there was well. no there was no intention uh, that your episode 110. It was not like I'm going through my Woo-hoo. my directory and just finding Jackie O'Brien and putting her at the bottom. Oh yeah, there, you did. No, no, no. There, there <laughs> is somewhere in the middle. No, no, no. Absolutely <laughs> not. You know what's funny is I have I really don't have uh, my thoughts or who I want on for a, like I try to look. Closer to the date, like, you know, six weeks out, eight weeks out, whatever, trying to get people to, to see if they'll they'll do the show. Most people have been on, and they will come on again, which is which has been very good. I've had a few people on twice already. But I don't want to go to the third time yet. So I'm trying yeah. to I'm trying to uh, get new people to be on, and I'm, I've been asking some Unless people. Unless they've got real good subject matter. Yeah, of course. So, it's always you know, good. You know, I, I think the subject matter is always important. And you and I yeah. work together in radio in, in New York City, which I've told the stories many times about the Fortune Off building. Uh, but it's, <laughs> I want to get your opinion of the work conditions. We, we, so just for those of you that haven't listened or if it's the first time you've ever listened to Lens Burning Bush, oh. we used to do traffic in a room. It, it was in the Fortune Off building on 53rd in New York City. And, and we would, floor. yeah, we would do, so the cable vision at the time had, uh, it was news 12 channels. They had the Bronx, they had Long Island, they had New York West city, Chester. Westchester, uh, New, and Jersey. New Jersey. So we would do the traffic 24 hours a day for that. That was how we got all together. So most of these guests that you've seen, we've worked together in, in some way. Now it was fantastic, but, but what was the funniest thing about it? was normally when you're broadcasting, you want quiet, right? But <laughs> this was, we would start, and it was introducing ourselves, and you'd hear five people starting their traffic reports oh, in the yeah. room. yeah. At the same time. At the same time. So yeah. uh, people didn't care, and you know, people at Cablevision, they liked it. They liked the idea that we were in this little room. Uh, it was almost well, the like... the thing is... We got in sync with it as a group. Yeah. You did the mornings, I did the afternoons, where we would all talk at the same time and had in our heads this clock where we knew exactly when to stop, but we'd all stop at the same time as well. Oh, yeah. So it was kind of neat to see. But what's interesting is we weren't just doing 30-second traffic reports. We were doing two minutes, if I remember Minute right. Minute 50. Minute 50. So it was it was a long traffic report. So anybody that's been that listens to a traffic report now, it's typically maybe twenty seconds of content and a ten second commercial, right? It's like thirty seconds at most. You've had Heather O'Rourke on, and she is the best at New York traffic. I mean, you hear her rattle that off, and and but but she's she knows what she's talking about, which is great. And it's a lot to get in in a short period of time. <laughs> it is. It's a lot. But we would do a minute. Imagine talking for a minute 50. But we had to go over. We had to do sections of the. So we were covering along a, a different area. Like I would cover Long mm-hmm. Island in, in the morning. So I'd have to go, you know, and, and in the morning, you know, the rush hour. So you cover all the roads. And we had cameras that you could talk about, you know. And maps. And maps. Maps and they, cameras. They love the maps and they love the cameras. They love the pictures. The kids love the pictures. Okay. <laughs> but it was fun. the pictures. And one thing that I loved about that is we all became sort of a, we became a, a family together because we were always mm. together, right? We would always, you know, you would leave the morning crew, but we'd all know each other. We'd work together. And what was funny is the door would close. We'd do the traffic report. And by like after nine o'clock, uh, so we would work till, you know, nine or whatever, the, the, the next shift would come on a little bit later. But what was funny is you would see the salespeople come up and, it, uh, it it was like don't feed the animals. It was like <laughs> please don't, don't look over there where that room is. Just we don't know what's going out of that room because it was just. Uh, uh, but it I, was I, yeah. it was a time where 
I, I think if you're lucky enough in life to work with coworkers that you have good memories for so many years. Yeah. Remember people so fondly and keep in touch. I know. You and I have seen each other over the years and yeah. we haven't worked together together in 20 yeah, years. Yeah, more. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And what's funny yeah. is we all um, have great stories. So when you were, uh, I remember when you moved to Orlando area, I was working mm-hmm. for another company at the time, but I happened to be in Orlando and we got together. Yeah. Um, so we did. It, 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 that's what's beautiful about this. I've had, so... We've had Lisa Chase on. You can go back and listen to her episode. We've had Sal, Sal Cowan. Cowan on. He was just on recently. Giancarlo was on. We, we've we had Gordon Deal on. We have Heather O'Rourke, oh, Tina Lang, um, all of the people that we really worked with uh, through there. They have been on in one way, you know, shape or form. I've had them on here. So it's been fun to do this. And, you know, it's kind of like my version of Seinfeld's, you know, comedians in cars getting coffee it's mm-hmm. kind of like traffic reporters you know kibitzing um talking about well you nonsense. gotta share the fortune off building yeah. because outside the fortune off building was this beautiful punch bowl crystal punch bowl in the window you remember yeah. that yes and it was this full crystal display and then you would walk in our building say hi to the doorman get in the elevator and then there was the 10th floor do you want to share about the tenth floor? Oh line? man, that I tell you that, that the carpet, the just the, the bathrooms, I just it was it was it was like <laughs> the every other floor probably was gorgeous, but our floor was not good. Our windows were spray painted. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. So we we couldn't see out unless you peeled the paint off or opened them, oh, which okay. were giant windows that you could jump out of. That is, yeah, crazy. Uh, it but, was crazy. But you know what? It was a fun time, and I would not, like, I you know, there's certain things you would never regret. I, I don't regret any minute of that. I loved every minute no, of I it. I either. moved um, to Cincinnati area in 2001, so I left New York to do that. And I stayed with, with the company to uh, do traffic in Cincinnati. So I, you know, moved on to do uh, certainly other things, and now I'm not, not really doing traffic anymore. But you're still doing it. So how how is it different today mm. uh, than when we did it 20 years ago? A lot more resources to use. Um, uh, Everything is online. I mean, back in the early days, we had to listen to police scanners and or look out the window with a pair of binoculars. I've done that in different cities. Um, People call in or we would even call, say, a gas station and go, hey, look out the window and see what you could. I mean, we were creative back then. Uh, now everything is online. You've got so many DOT cameras and, and all the police reports are there. Uh, so many sources. We're doing this now. Yeah. I mean, this conversation now, there's been so much technology. I know. Um, and I do my reports from home. I am one of those lucky people. And if you told me a couple of years ago, I could broadcast from my bedroom, I would not have bought it. Right. Not with any quality, well, anyways. And, but- I, and and just to stop you for one second, but we, Tina Lang and I talked about this because Tina, mm-hmm. back in the nineties, she was doing the uh, at home before anybody was doing. She had an ISDN line mm-hmm. in her house, and she would do the traffic. She would do a split shift sometimes, but the afternoon she would be on the air from her house. And we were, but you know, they would have yeah. to install a dedicated line. Yeah, people don't it's understand. It's not like yeah. just popping up a website and boom, you're there. Right there, that had to be a phone line installed. <laughs> oh yeah, it wasn't. You know, it, it's different. But if you look at it, it's kind of funny how we've evolved, right? From from the yeah. days of Tina doing the ISDN line to now, where you and I are are, are talking over Streamyard, um, mm-hmm. and we are now being heard on iTunes and Spotify and Google Play, all these places, including Facebook Live and YouTube and all this stuff now, where how how are we doing this? I don't even know, but it's working, right? That's that, yeah. it's just it's it's amazing. And I like this better. I don't know if you use for work or whatever, you, sometimes you use Zoom or Microsoft Teams mm-hmm. or whatever. But this is fantastic. You know, I I like the quality of the streamer. The streaming is great. Uh, it is, you know, yeah, again, I don't, Isabel. and I don't get, uh, I don't get, uh, you know, I'm not uh, getting sponsored by StreamYard. I just like it. I, I think it's, uh, uh, somebody had re- recommended it to me and I was like, you know, I'll try it because originally I wasn't doing video and people like that. 
that I wasn't doing video. But now they got to see me every week. <laughs> but no, they like to see what's going on. They don't, you know, I think people, yeah. plus it's easier. Like, you know, hey, it's 12 noon. You could watch it live and you're you're seeing it. And, you know, they they like the idea of seeing it in addition to hearing it. Plus, it's easier for somebody to click on a video than it is to find it on all the different places on your phone or, or whatever. But now I have a website, too. You can listen on LensBurningBush.com, yes. which I have my own domain name now. I'm really starting to get, you know, this is a little bit too much for me. I had somebody work on it. But so LensBurningBush.com. If you type it in, you can, all the episodes are there, all three seasons, so 110 episodes, and video just started within the last uh, year, so you'll see just the videos that we have, uh, but they're all up there, uh, and the YouTube channel, you could subscribe and like it, but I, I just, you know, it's kind of funny how this has kind of evolved into uh, into it, but I, I love having guests like you on, every, you know, because it's, it's fun oh, for it's me. it's been fun. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're not done yet. I wanted to ask you about one thing. Okay. So. Okay. Fran Dresser, do you remember the nanny? Right. You of love. Of course. Okay. So I, I, I it liked was, it. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. We we liked it. Was it was fun. Well, apparently, uh, the nanny is going to have a Broadway debut. Uh, apparently, Dresh is mm. sixty four years old, and she talked about on People. She said she was launching her new book, and is for nanny, and the nanny musical is moving forward. At a good pace, she says. Rachel Bloom is doing the lyrics. Uh, Peter, Mark Jacobson, uh, and her are doing the the book, and she's having their first official read at the end of July. The Nanny Musical, of course, inspired by the 1993 series of the same name. That's I, I love, uh, you know, it's funny how if you look at it now and you watch it, uh, Fran Dresser and, of course, uh, the mother and the grandmother, and 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 Charles Shaughnessy and uh, I think I think it's a pretty funny show. So it's very New York, very New York. And tell you, you know, that's why they became the nanny, right? But you're gonna, yes. you know, some schwa. Can you say schwa de vie? Is that it? What it is? Schwa de vie. Schwa de vie. Apparently, schwa there's gonna be a musical. We'll kind of get music with Fran Dresser, you know, kind of talking like that. So that's uh, <laughs> <laughs> speaking of things from the '90s. <laughs> uh, did you, you, you watched the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and I'm not going to get into details yes. about, about Will Smith and the whole slapping thing. That's, yeah. that's not where I'm going here, but you remember Carlton, right? Yes. And everybody loves the dance, right? The Carlton dance, right? You know, yes. you gotta, you gotta, you gotta do the Carlton you dance. You can do it, can you? Yeah, oh, of course, of course. And I'm like, <laughs> it's not unusual to be, yeah. So I, I always liked that, but apparently Alfonso Ribeiro, he revealed, he played Carlton. He doesn't appreciate it when fans ask him to recreate the Carlton dance. And I don't How know. How many years has he right? had to do that? I understand. Where someone stops and go, hey, 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 do that. But think about it, Jackie. Come on. Think about this. If there was something <laughs> that you did, that you did, and you were proud, you, you, you did this work, and somebody 30 years or 20 years later will ask you to do it, wouldn't you like it? I mean, come on. You don't think Adam West liked it after a while of, of – People coming up to him when he's sixty-five before he passed away, whatever. To, to, I'm bat, you know, it's <laughs> like to do the Batusi. Come on, I'm, I mean, I'm Batman. I'm Batman. Yeah, but no, the Batusi or you know, uh, with the Catwoman stuff. Again, nobody's disrespecting him. They just want to see. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, he could do a ton of other stuff. He's done game shows. He's done other he things. Has. He was the and you, you know, know, people want him to do it. All people care is do the Carlton dance. I'm sorry. But sometimes he's probably just not in the mood to do I, it. I, you know what? You get in the mood, Seinfeld. It's like Seinfeld ever <laughs> said. You don't want to be in the mood? You get in the mood. I don't have a job. I don't have this. I don't, I, need, I need you to get in the mood right now. I mean, come on, you know. Uh, but anyway, he just uh, apparently gets asked to do the dance all the time. Uh, I, I, don't, uh, I don't – I don't – you know, he, he wants to uh, not do it, I guess, is the way we call it. But I, I think he should continue to do it. I, I mean, embrace what got you there, right? I think a lot of times Let's people want to... Check wanna... his mood first before you yeah, ask him. I guess, I guess. I mean, it's just one of those things where I think a lot of people do these shows and they don't embrace the show. 
uh, and they, you know, maybe with uh, Star Trek or something, you know, they don't embrace it. If they embrace it, come on, you know, it was after a while. How many times did Leonard Nemo have to do the finger thing? Yeah, and live long and prosper. Come on. I mean, yes. but it, you know what? Do it. He did it and did other things as well. It's it's all good. Um, now, do you, uh, so you, a lot of people watch all these videos, right? They watch all the, um, there's, uh what you call it? Twitch? There's other. I, I don't know. There's a couple of other things now. They have TikTok, right? Is that? I mean, I'm, I, I watch cat videos. Yeah, that's what I figured. Well, have you ever and seen somebody videos. trying to cook and then blow up their kitchen? Have you ever seen that? Well, apparently yeah, there's someone. Yeah, sure. <laughs> there's someone uh. Uh, that was on Twitch. Her name is Kelly Karen. She's known as K Jane Karen on the live streaming platform Twitch, and she had a hot broadcast uh, on Wednesday. Uh, she nearly burnt down her c- kitchen on a live cooking uh, segment. She goes, I don't know what to do, guys. I don't know what to do. How about call a fire department and get off the damn air? I mean, you know what but I'm she saying? she got a lot of hits from that. She and did. Four, maybe it'll four, pay for the listen to this. 4.4 4 million views. Wow. We're doing the wrong thing, Jackie. I'm telling you. We are doing Yeah, we are. I mean, I got to blow up my but kitchen. But we're having fun. I have fire in the background, lens burning bush, but it doesn't do us any good. <laughs> yeah, you do. You need like a little burning pot in the corner or something. I don't know. I think that, you know, all I got is you can like lens burning bush on Facebook at lens burning bush. You could follow along at lens burning bush on Twitter, YouTube channel, Len Harvey. And of course, I mentioned lens burning bush.com, iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, Podbean, iHeartRadio, tune in. You can even ask Alexa to play lens burning bush. I will tell you, though, Jackie, just make sure you say Lens Burning Bush podcast to Alexa, because sometimes something will come up that you might not want when you say Lens I won't Burning. say the A word because I don't want her to talk to no. me right now. <laughs> exactly. We don't want her to talk to you. But again, it's, <laughs> it's, it's amazing, all this stuff. And I've got my, uh, my theme song. Uh, you know, Blue Jelly is a band in northern Kentucky, and they were nice enough to come up with Lens Bush is Burning, right? They, Lens bush is I love it. I love it. I love that they did this for me. And they, you know, they actually did another song for me. How can we sleep when Lens Bush is burning? Little midnight oil, <laughs> right? So you haven't used that yet. No, I haven't used. It. I use this one because uh, it's it's easier. But they have that one as well, and I've got that recorded uh, from a previous episode. They've been on a couple of times. They were on the hundredth episode, and they sent that was that was a present for me. Uh, on the hundredth episode to uh, record that, I recorded it for the so Blue Jelly. If you're in Northern Kentucky, follow Blue Jelly on Facebook, and uh, they're they're a wonderful band. My friend Jim Beatenbender and group uh, Steve Ferris and all the guys, uh, Joe on the drums, they do a fantastic job. Uh, if you ever get a chance to watch some of the videos, I actually one thing that I love about them is every year they let me sing "Sweet Caroline" with the band. So I get to, ah, I get to, do you drink first? Uh, a little bit. I'll just say a little okay. bit. <laughs> but, they, but they love it. They don't do uh, Neil Diamond until I do it. So it's kind of funny how that, that works. But, but Jackie, thank you so much for being on the show. I really, thank you. it's great to talk to you. We'll have you on again. And I'm sorry again uh, for 110 uh, episodes. That was not uh, my intention, but uh, thank you so much. 110 is th- a good number. Absolutely. Thanks to Jackie O'Brien, my band uh, Blue Jelly for my great theme song. I'm Len Harvey. We'll be back with another episode of Lens Burning Bush next week. So long.